Now, um, I mentioned, why do I mention this? As I say, Wittgenstein, top of the pops, very pop, very influential philosopher. Poor old Karl Popper. At the London School of Economics, you go to where his office used to be, and he's, there's, there's no plaque, there's no statue, there's no bust, and his old office is now the gentleman's toilet. <laughs> he's been just he's just been forgotten. Anyway, what did he have to say about the logical positivists? This is what he had to say. He, had, he said that logical positivism or any other method that relies on induction cannot prove a theory or a conjecture or a statement to be true. That no statement that is based on induction can be demonstrated to be true. And in this, of course, he's simply drawing upon Hume. Simply drawing upon the problem that Hume pointed out with induction or all of that time ago. It doesn't matter, according to Popper, how objective or careful the scientist is in capturing the data, they're gathering the empirical data, it doesn't matter how much data you've got, how big the pool of data is, you can never demonstrate that a proposition is true. However, and this is where Popper saved the day, at least in some people's view, however, a proposition can be proved to be false. <coughs> you cannot demonstrate the truth of the proposition that all swans are white. Because at any time you may come across a pink swan, a black swan or a yellow swan. But you can demonstrate the, the but you can demonstrate the proposition to be false if and when you come across a black swan, a yellow swan or a green swan. So statements cannot be demonstrated to be true, but they can be demonstrated to be false using induction. The project that the logical positivists had set about to achieve, that is truth through empirical evidence, is therefore not achievable. You cannot achieve truth through empiricism and through induction and through careful observation and through allowing nature to speak. You cannot. But you can demonstrate things to be false. Now, what, are the, what is the implication? What does this mean for the practice of science? What this means for the practice of science, and this is where Popper continues to be influential among practicing scientists, although not among philosophers. But following Popper, it's essential that a hypothesis be capable of being tested, and when tested, that it be capable of being falsified. If a knowledge claim, according to Popper, if a knowledge claim cannot be tested empirically or inductively, and is not capable of being falsified, it is not a scientific claim. So think about this. All swans are white. Okay. All swans are white. Now that, according to Popper, is a scientific knowledge claim. It happens to be false. We know that not all swans are white. But it is a knowledge claim that is capable of being falsified. Therefore, it is a scientific knowledge claim. But a claim that unicorns exist is not scientific. It cannot be falsified. You might say to me, 
Look at all the evidence. No unicorn, no unicorn, no unicorn. Go all around the world, and there's no unicorn. Never ever has been any unicorn. Doesn't matter. It can't be falsified. We don't know whether on the dark side of the moon there is a unicorn, whether in the future there will be a unicorn, whether on some other planet there is a unicorn. You cannot, it cannot be demonstrated to be false. Therefore, the statement is not scientific. Now, what he meant by not scientific here yeah, is that it, it was simply... Um, uh, um, had no content... It had no meaning. He wasn't making a judgment about whether it was true or false. He was just making a judgment about whether it had whether, whether it had meaning. I suppose. So, uh, for Popper, economics is not scientific. History is not scientific. Psychology is not scientific. Social sciences are not scientific. Uh, Freudian uh, Freudian psychology is certainly not scientific. Etc. Etc. Because they do not make falsifiable claims. I am um, I am a drug addict because my father beat me when I was a child. It's a proposition that may or may not be true, but it's not falsifiable. How could it be ever demonstrated? to be false. I can't live my life again with a different father and not be beaten. We have no parallel case. There is, there is no evidence that can possibly be brought forth to falsify the statement. Therefore, the statement does not fall within the circles that I drew earlier. It's a different kind of knowledge claim. It's not a scientific knowledge claim. The true claim that the lifespan of a human being is less than 200 years is falsifiable. So if I claim that a human lifespan, maximum 200 years, that's a scientific claim because it may be found some place in the world there may be a person who's more than 200 years old and the claim would be falsifiable. And so we find, um, even today, uh, despite the lack of influence that I was pointing out earlier about Popper, we find today uh, that scientists set out to...